Linear programming is a branch of applied mathematics that helps businesses address the problem of resource and time optimization. It has found its application in different fields such as production planning, transportation and routing, various types of scheduling, portfolio optimization and much more. Marko Nikolic and Georgi Grozic will share the rich experience of grid dynamics on how to implement different types of LP models in AI projects to help businesses from different domains make data-driven decisions. In addition, the presentation will focus on the life cycle of a project from setting up a linear programming problem to deploying the final solution. Guys, please welcome to the stage. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is uh, Giorgio, and today uh, with my colleague Marco, we will present one interesting topic, which is application of linear programming for solving business problems. Okay, we have a problem. Can we change the slide, please? Okay, there is some kind of delay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, before we proceed, uh, first of all, we would uh, like to say that we are really happy to be here today with you. And uh, we would also like to uh, introduce, of course, ourselves and to take a moment to introduce our company. So Marco and I are senior data scientists and we work for a company called Grid Dynamics, uh, which is a leading provider of technology consulting, agile custom software development and data analytics for Fortune 1000 corporations undergoing digital transformation. The headquarter of uh, our, please, next slide. So uh, the headquarter of our, uh, thank you. Uh, the headquarter of our company uh, is San Ramon uh, in California. And as you can see from this map, we have uh, eight more offices in the United States and many more in uh, Europe. Uh, mostly in Central and Eastern Europe. And 87% uh, of our engineers are actually located uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, the office in Belgrade was uh, opened in 2018 and today we have more than 160 engineers and we are still growing. We are really proud of our top global engineering talent where majority of our employees have advanced degrees and several years of tenure. Also, Grid Dynamics has proven its ability to grow with a client using hybrid onshore or nearshore teams. We also have a globally distributed team staffed by expertise and tried and tested internal recruiting processes. So, as I mentioned, our company is really fast growing, so please check out uh, open positions in our company. Okay, uh, so on this slide, we uh, presented some of our customers. For example, we have Apple, Google, Stanley Black & Decker, American Eagle, The Home Depot, and many more. Most of these companies and our clients uh, are actually companies from Fortune 1000 and Fortune uh, 500 companies. Okay, so let's go back to our topic. First of all, I would like to highlight the scope of this presentation. So uh, in this presentation, we will share our own experience with uh, linear programming and uh, its application in uh, different business cases. So uh, the presentation will be some kind of a guidance how to implement it. But on the other side, uh, this presentation won't be in-depth or comprehensive tutorial or nor math-oriented presentation. So these are the expectations of this presentation. So let's start. Uh, so what is optimization? Uh, from a business point of view, uh, we can observe optimization as a tool for saving time and money. And because of this, uh, optimization has found uh, really uh, its application uh, in different areas, in uh, different industries, for example, in the industry, in business design and planning, in artificial intelligence and this list is really long and we even have uh, even more cases use cases for example 
Optimization is used in portfolio management, in solving routing problems, in resource scheduling, in credit to risk optimization, in promo planning, and so on. Okay, the, there, is also, there are also different types of uh, optimization techniques and algorithms, and on this slide we have mentioned only uh, a few of them, some common optimization techniques. Uh, we are, uh, I hope that most of you are already familiar with Gradient, for example, which we use in neural networks. Then we have first and second uh, order uh, algorithms. We have evolutionary algorithms, linear programming, and many other um, optimization techniques. Generally speaking, uh, optimization techniques could be divided into two categories. Uh, we have local and global algorithms, where local algorithms are usually gradient-based, where global uh, optimization algorithms are usually non-gradient-based and evolutionary. We can also um, classify optimization techniques uh, in a different way uh, by their characteristics. And uh, this way we can distinguish between continuous and discrete optimization techniques, unconstrained and constrained. And obviously this classification is uh, done by type of variable. So obviously if a variable can take on a value from a discrete set of values, then uh, we are talking about discrete optimization techniques and vice versa, we have continuous optimization techniques. Similarly, you have um, constraints on top of our uh, variables, then we uh, are talking about constrained optimization and we have also unconstrained optimization techniques. Usually optimization algorithms uh, have one objective function, but there are also cases when we have some uh, optimization algorithms that have uh, no optimization objective functions or even multi-objective functions. And finally, we have deterministic and stochastic uh, optimization techniques, where deterministic uh, optimization techniques uh, follow uh, a strict uh, uh, and precise sequence of actions. And today we will focus on linear programming, which is a dis deterministic, uh, continuous and constraint optimization technique with a single objective function. Okay, so what is linear programming? Linear programming is a method to achieve the best outcome in a mathematical model whose requirements are represented by linear relationships. So this is a definition and we can also think of uh, linear programming uh, from a different point of view. Uh, for example, we can compare machine learning with uh, uh, linear programming. And uh, for example, we can think like this. If we use machine learning to make predictions, then we use linear programming optimization to make decisions. And this is a really important thing uh, and big difference. And this is why uh, we can say that linear programming optimization is complementary for, sh for machine learning. And both th these techniques are really powerful and uh, by combining them together, we can even create even more powerful uh, solutions for different business cases. Okay, on this illustration, uh, we will um, present uh, a simple case of optimization in a 3D space where we have uh, two variables A and B and the objective function, which is defined this way with this formula. We want to minimize this uh, objective function. And we also have a list of constraints. So we have one equality and one inequality. And these constraints actually defines this green area, which is uh, a search space for feasible solutions. And in this space, we are trying to find our optimal value for this objective function, in our case, a minimum value. And in linear programming, we have something that is called uh, simplex method, and it allows us to easily find, uh, in a deterministic way, um, optimal value. In our case, as, as I mentioned, a minimum function. So, uh, yeah, this is a typical uh, approach in mathematics to state uh, this uh, problem as uh, optimization function, where we first have this optimization. This is our goal, 
something that we want to achieve. Usually we want something to maximize or minimize. For example, we might want to maximize the profit or to minimize something, for example, to minimize waste, to minimize late orders or anything. Then we have a decision variables, uh, and that is X in our case. And these are the decisions that we take. And, and on top of that, we have constraints. And constraints are actually limits. They are limiting our decisions. So uh, after this, uh, I would say, intuition uh, that is graphically uh, presented behind uh, this optimization technique, I, I would also like to just uh, mention uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of linear programming. Obviously, the first advantage is that uh, linear programming allows us to find global optimum. And also, it is one of the best approaches when there are constraints that need to be incorporated with our objective function. And linear programming works really well when we have a huge number of variables and constraints. And here, we are talking about matrices that can take on, uh, for example, uh, 10 to the power of 7 non-zero values. So linear programming works really well with such cases. Also, linear programming is usually the way to go approach for many domain problems. And there is also another advantage that is not mentioned on this slide, and that is um, linear programming uh, is being used for uh, quite a while, and uh, it is also easy to interpret to business people there are also some disadvantages. The first and the biggest one is that linear programming assumes that the relationship between our variables is linear, which is not always the case. So we can use, for example, quadratic programming, or we can use some other optimization technique uh, to solve nonlinear problems. The second disadvantage is that LP assumes that value is fractionable, which again is not always the case, but again, uh, we can solve it uh, by using something that is called integer programming or mixed integer programming. And also there are some combinatorial problems uh, that could be really difficult to solve. And uh, for example, if you're using linear programming, it will need years to be solved. Okay, so uh, that's all from my side regarding this uh, theoretical introduction and my colleague Mark will take over and uh, say something more practical from his experience. Thank you, Georgia. Hello, everyone. Uh, the next part of the presentation, we're going to speak about the necessary step in order to implement this in a, in a business. So let's start it. Let's first see if I want to use this. Oh, yeah. So first, we are going to start from the life cycle of the project. There is usually four main steps here. We have a planning, design, deploy, monitoring. What each step do? So first, in the planning, you will want to see what is the domain of your problem. Is there any solving solution for this? So you need to plan for the scope as well and to identify potential problems you have. Then the usual next step is design the problem when you answer some question on the planning. So you will, you will then design here your parameters, objective functions that you want to maximize or minimize. You will enumerate your decision variables and you're going to construct your constraints. After that, when you make something, you want to deploy it. So this de deployment from our ex uh, experience, it's the best done in agile way. So while you're designing, you will not be aware of all the constraints you have. And something is going to reveal when you get your first output. So you will then answer that, that uh, question in this phase. And after that, the last phase is monitoring. So because we are making a plan for, for suggesting some decision, you should watch out. Is this decision tracked? Is it used? Or there is some other decision. So you should watch out about this drift, something maybe change it during the real time. Uh, you should watch out about your KPIs, uh, change of input parameters, constant nature, and something really important, response of environment. So maybe you have your competitors, and they will respond somehow on your optimization plan. So they will change their strategy as well. So let's start from design and planning. Uh, we present this uh, design phase through the pyramid. So you will start from a type of the problem and go, go through the, this pyramid, but this cycle is actually, you need to iterate it over it because 
At the beginning, you will not know, know all the answers. Um, so, go to the type of the problem. You should first define if your relation between variables that you have is linear. So what you could use, it's a linear or quadratic problem or non-linear problem. Then you should define which type of the variables you have. Is it continuous or some integer variable or binary? So it's going to define which, which type of linear programming you need. And then you need to estimate, is it this hard problem or easy task to solve? Because of this, you should plan for some pre-solve relaxation or warm start. Uh, all of these questions are going to actually to help you to select the best solver you need for your problem. Some of them are commercial and expensive, and some of them are open sources. So you, need, you really need to tailor for your need here. You want to optimize your revenue, for example. And you don't want to, to have, uh, throw your money on something that you don't need. The next phase is parameters, <laughs> that is data. We have actually two types of sources of parameters that we need for optimization. The one is when we have connected variables where, where that we want to, opti to, to get as a final solution, some of them are somehow connected. This is usually when you have some combinations. So you need to see how they are connected and, uh, they, uh, and put that in a table format, which is going to use in optimization. There you have other parameters as well, something like as a decision, um, some regulation rules, some business rules or something like that. So for example, it's for the driver, the driver cannot, uh, or man cannot have a shift more than eight hours. So this is, this is type of the parameters you need. You should watch out if you need some pre-processing step. And the last but not least, it's a benchmark. Benchmark is really important here. This is something that is going to use to compare your output results with what you get. So you need to see if you're optimized at all. And usually you can find this benchmark something that is currently used by expertise knowledge, third-party solution, some heuristics, and if you don't have anything of that, you can use it, some benchmark problem on which you can tailor your problem to see is it everything work correct. Second purpose of benchmark, uh, benchmark um, could be as well to initialize your warm start if you have a really tough problem. So if, if you have a problem that you, you need a years to find initial solution, this is, this is a good start for it. Then we need to design our objective goal. So what is objective goal? This is actually decision variables that, oh, uh, that uh, are your business want optimized. So you need to answer on the question, do you have more goals or just one goal? So if you have more goals, usually you need to, wait, uh, to make distribution of the weights between them. And after that, you need to see what you need to minimize or maximize there. And if you have a really tough problem, there is some slack variables that uh, it's included in order to make your constraints soft. So it's not to be tight one. And you need to decide if this soft constraint, uh, this slack variables should be included in objective goal as well. Uh, then you have decision variables. On decision variables, you want to enumerate all the variables you have. So first one, this is decision variables. This is exposed variables that business see uh, and that you can, you, you, you can watch from them that you want to optimize, to find the final solution for it. Then uh, you have the slack variables that we spoke previously about. This is for soft constraints, and you can have some intermediate variables that actually help you to find your decision variables. Then you need to answer on questions one more time, is this continuous, binary, or integer? You need to answer on questions, are you have a positive or negative one? You need really to implement it. If you have the negative one, you need to tell this solver, because by default, uh, all the variables are positive. Uh, you need to see if you have upper bound or lower bound. If you have those, those, uh, those limitations, it will help you find the optimal solution if you have a really tough problem to solve. And at the end, if you, if you can somehow initialize your variables, it will actually help you find it faster. And this is really important to say because you have some optimization problem that needs the days to be solved. If you can find the warm start for this, it will can reduce the, the time to the half an hour, 10 minutes. And the last but not the least, the most important step, if you ask me, it's to enumerate all constraints you have. Where you can find your constraints? This is actually the process of decision making of the business. So you need to watch out for that process. How the output of the calendar is connected to your objective that you want to optimize. Then you find to see the regulation you have, the business rule they, it's used, and it yet some physical constraints. Something as a physical constraints is that 
a man cannot be, cannot be on the same place uh, at the same time, on, on the different place at the same time. So then you need to define how your constraints are bonded. Uh, you need to define, is it hard or soft constraints you have? Then you need to find priorities between the constraints. If you have soft constraints, maybe you want to turn some off and you need to, to see which the priority you have in order to turn it off. And at the end, you need to check out if all the constraints are linear. Because if you don't have a linear, then your solver will have a tough problem to solve and you will not find a good solution. Once you design your solution, you want to deploy it. And usually, you will start from the compare, comparing your output with the benchmark calendar. When you got your analysis, you will go to the business and you are going to evaluate it. Usually, this needs a, a couple of cycles to adjust your parameters, add new constraints, see if constraints are, are implemented good, and once the business is satisfied, you can deploy your solution. Let's speak a little bit about architecture that you can use it. If you want to scale your problem, you need, uh, generally, we saw the pattern that we need three different parts of our architecture. That is, we need a server for parameters. The, it's going to deal for the all input and output, all output values, uh, initialization of all models, hyperparameters, and etc. Then we need construct manager server, which is going to construct our parameter uh, object, cons constraint object, variable object, and etc. And this is really good uh, architecture because you can use it different third party solver here. Uh, you can, uh, for example, you can, for, for a really tough problem, you can use it some commercial one, but if you have an easy problem to solve, you can change this, this last part for the, some open source, which you don't need to pay for it. Okay. Let's speak about cases the, that we were facing that we want to optimize it. First one that we are going to speak is product promotion, but we have NDA here, so I cannot go into details how we construct the constraints. I can just lay out what, what we've done and what is the type of the problem we have. So we have a client, which is a big global product manufacturer worldwide. Uh, the problem is to find optimal planning for promotions of their product in order to raise the revenue and margins. So let's illustrate this problem. So let's say that we have product A, product B, and we want to see what is the best calendar for this product. So we can put each of these products on some discount. We can put on some promotion as a multi-buy. So this is like, if you buy two of this product, you will get one free, or it's base, so it's not going to be on promotion. This dummy combination here has around 50,000 combinations. And what we were facing is 10 to the power of 73. So let's speak about the worst case scenario. We want to pick one combination and say, OK, we are going to hope that this is going to be the optimal one. The chance of this happening without optimization, it's like winning 10 times on the lottery ticket in a row. So at the end, we have this kind of design. We use mixed integer linear programming. Why? Because we have this combination. So this combination, it's, it was a bin binary variable. So we, need, we cannot use it uh, to say vanilla linear pro programming to test the original linear programming technique. It was a medium difficulty because of number of combinations. For tools, we use a Python and Groovy commercial one. Input parameters was this product catalog, something similar to what I show you. Hysterical records, how different promotions were sold. For benchmark, we have a planned Promotion plan uh, defined by expertise knowledge. Objective was we want to maximize profit and revenue. Decision variables, we have 15 types of decision variables. And we, if we speak uh, from the perspective of the matrices, how they are defined. This is how the linear program is defined in a programmatic way. So you have the variables and uh, you have the columns uh, is for constraints. We have uh, 20,000 of rows for 15 types of di different decision variables that need to be estimated. Um, from the constraints part, we have 30,000 of columns. There was like decision constraints, eight types, business constraints, 10 types, physical constraints, two types, and regulation constraints, three types of them. Um, at, at the end, we have a really good results. We got around more, uh, let, let's say, I cannot speak uh, about real number, but we have the big profit, which is more than 10%. Uh, in saving, uh, but while we are doing this, we save the resources, that is material and products. Currently, solution is implemented in uh, several really big retailer chains and integration is continued to uh, put worldwide. 
Uh, I will let once more Georgi to speak about second case. Thank you. Yeah, so this is the second use case of optimization technique being uh, applied in uh, this time in finance. And uh, this is not a rare case. It is a pretty common case to apply optimization techniques, uh, especially in portfolio rebalancing. And for those who are not familiar with the term portfolio, uh, portfolio is um, a collection of financial investments, such as stocks, bonds, uh, cash, or other cash equivalents. And rebalancing is actually a trading strategy uh, where an investor uh, is selling and, buy and buying stocks in order to restore some target allocations for its portfolio. So uh, we did a project for one big United States corporation in the area of wealth management. Uh, unfortunately, we are not allowed to mention its name because of the NDA, but I will give some hints. Uh, so this company has thousands of financial advisors. Uh, it has a million of clients and uh, trillions of dollars in client assets. And financial advisors are actually people who are taking care of portfolio management. Our goal was to create an application which will perform portfolio rebalancing uh, and in, in automatic way and of course in an optimal way. And on this slide, uh, I have presented uh, one simple portfolio. This is just an uh, imaginary example of a portfolio of some client. And here we can see that the, this client has uh, a set of securities, security tickers. Uh, it has stocks for Apple, Cisco, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and so on. And then we have a quantities, uh, like a number of stocks for each uh, security ticker. Then we have a trade date, which is actually a date of uh, when, when this stock was purchased. We have a purchase price, current price, and current value. In reality, portfolio has much more financial information, uh, but uh, here we just want to keep it uh, simple. And... Uh, Usually, the quantity is represented as a weight or weights, which is um, a percentage uh, that is relative to total quantity of stocks in a single portfolio. So I will follow the same approach as my colleague uh, in order to frame this problem. Uh, I will use the same template. So first, uh, this type of problem could be defined as mixed integer quadratic programming. For tools, we used Python and CVX OPT library, which is an open source Python library for solving convex problems. For input parameters, we used some historical records like tax slots. And for benchmark, we used third-party portfolio rebalancing software. We had several objectives, um, and we solved it in, let's call it a three three-step approach. Uh, so we were optimizing, uh, optimizing, we are trying to m maximize profit, to minimize turnover rate, and to minimize tax burden. Our decision variables were allocation weights, and of course we had uh, a set of constraints. First, uh, we had a lower and upper allocation tolerance bounds that were defined for each security ticker for each portfolio. And uh, this tolerance bounds actually limits the amount of uh, stocks that we use while trading. Then we had another mathematical constraint, which says that uh, sum of all allocation weights must sums up to one, which is obvious. And also we had a set of uh, tax rate uh, constraints because uh, when we are selling something and depending on the amount of stocks that we sell, we are paying different taxes. And uh, just a few lines uh, about the final results. So first we built a POC, uh, which was later delivered to production. And our solution guarantees optimal locations while minimizing turnover and tax burden. Uh, it turned out that uh, actually our solution uh, is better than some third-party software solutions. And we also proposed to our clients some uh, future plans to extend and improve our model to include some other factors like market impact, opportunity cost, risk, and so on. 
And that's all from our side. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we have about two minutes for questions, if there are any. Here? Yeah. Who is the first one? Hello, very nice talk. Thank I was you. just wondering, you say that uh, your solution is better than the third party solution, and I'm wondering in which way is it better? Well, uh, I believe I cannot t uh, reveal the details, but uh, I will try to explain it in a simple way. Uh, so our solution is uh, faster and we, ch we can achieve uh, the same or even better performance in uh, much less steps. So uh, we are making much less transactions and thus we are paying less, less tax uh, taxes because uh, each transaction costs. Second question. All right, thanks for the talk. Um, I was wondering, is technical knowledge about the solvers specifically needed? Yeah, okay. You actually, let's say, uh, it's really easy to use it. Um, it is good to know the technical knowledge for your intuition, how it's done, because you can stumble upon some bugs. This type of bugs is not a regular one. So you have an infeasibility solution, for example, and you need to watch out why you have it. But actually to implement it, it's, it, you don't need a deep knowledge of it. You just need to know how it's and why it's working. Okay, thanks. Any other question? If not, guys, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much for, for the presentation. Thank you very much.